Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very unusual and very destructive power of white dwarfs. Now we know what they are and we know that our sun is going to become white dwarf one day, but will our sun actually destroy the rest of the solar system? That's the question we're going to try to answer today. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this right here is a white dwarf. It's a very, very compact and very small star. This is what it looks like in comparison to our sun. And as a matter of fact, this is an extremely dense object that has quite a lot of gravity, but is only the size of our planet Earth. So it's a star that is compacted to very small volume. And we know that our sun is going to become one in about 5 billion years from now on. So what will actually happen to our solar system when this occurs? Well, it seems that we underestimated a lot of white dwarfs. It also seems that quite a lot of them are very destructive. About one-fourth of them are known as planet killers. They seem to completely destroy the planetary systems around them. And we've finally been able to explain and sort of um, show this using various simulations and also using very unusual um, observations that we've seen from many of these white dwarfs. So how do we know that these white dwarfs are so destructive? So let's actually go through the history of our own sun and try to figure out what is going to happen to it uh, and what is going to happen to our solar system in uh, some 5 billion years from now. So we're going to our solar system. This is our sun and in about let's just say 5 billion years from now, it is going to start expanding quite dramatically until it reaches the point when it actually becomes a very, very large red giant. And it's going to swallow Mercury and it's very likely going to swallow Venus, but it's kind of very likely that it's going to leave Earth alone. It's actually, Earth is going to survive this, uh, this part of our solar evolution and for about a billion years, the sun is going to stay like this. Then one day, all of this outer shell is going to essentially get thrown out and become what's known as uh, a nebula, or I guess in this case, it would be um, a planetary nebula. And what is left behind is nothing more uh, but a very small, very compact star known as a white dwarf. So there is the solar white dwarf there's the sun white dwarf right there in the middle. Now, as you can see, its mass actually decreased as well because a lot of it got thrown out as the nebula. So now it's at about 54% of its original mass. This, of course, implies that all of these planets that used to orbit very comfortably in a circular orbit around our sun are now orbiting in a somewhat more elliptical orbit because the uh, sun doesn't have as much gravity anymore. So here we'll see that all of the planets will suddenly change their orbits. Now, what this will create is a lot of new reformation of our solar system, a lot of new chaos. And so like you'll see that Earth and Jupiter will interact, a lot of other um, planets will interact as well, until uh, most of them will start basically interacting with one another. And possibly some of them might actually come really, really close to the sun. Now you'll see that Earth doesn't really come that close yet. But um, at some point, through the interaction with other planets, um, many of these objects, many of the asteroids, many of the planets will basically get elliptical orbits that will e essentially come really, really close to this white dwarf. And this is when interesting things start happening. So we've discovered that about one-fourth of white dwarfs, all of the white dwarfs we've discovered so far, seem to have quite a lot of metal, quite a lot of various metals on their surface. As a matter of fact, they kind of look something like this. So I'm gonna try to add as much of it as I can onto the surface of the white dwarf sun, and here you go. So this is kind of what we see. We see a lot of various metals on the surface, and it doesn't really make sense because due to the super high gravity of the white dwarf, all of this stuff should basically get swallowed up and end up in the center. 
and so all of the metal should end up in the center, but instead it seems to be on the surface. And the only explanations that, uh, that scientists seem to be satisfied with is that, well, it's because um, these white dwarfs are known as planet killers. They essentially, over um, millions and I guess billions of years, slowly shred all of the planets into nothingness, into tiny pieces, and then swallow them um, over a certain period of time. And this is exactly what we think might actually happen to many of the um, systems that will create white dwarfs, or at least one-fourth of these systems. And that also implies that at least tw there's at least 25% chance that our solar system will actually have the same fate. So in other words, if I were to zoom out here, and also change some of these orbits to basically evolve a little bit quicker, you'll notice that here is Jupiter approaching the Sun as a white dwarf. And now let's see what actually happens to this beautiful planet as it gets really, really, really close to the Sun. And just like that, because of the tidal forces and because of the proximity to this somewhat small but very, very powerful um, white dwarf, you'll see that Jupiter will start heating up and some of the pieces will actually start flying out. Now let's do this a few times. So we're going to let Jupiter do this a few times until it starts to basically uh, lose a lot of its mass and some of this mass starts to fall into the white dwarf. And so here's that second approach and let's see what actually happens to Jupiter as it approaches the white dwarf really, really closely. And there come the pieces flying off. So this is how uh, many of these planets would actually get shredded and destroyed by the White Dwarfs due to their really, really high tidal forces and really high gravity close by. And all of these pieces will eventually make it onto the surface of the White Dwarf and eventually fill the entire surface of this beautiful object. So this is kind of what it might look like as we're adding more and more uh, different metals here. And this is actually what the scientists seem to be seeing as well. So eventually our beautiful planet Earth might end up approaching the uh, sun as a white dwarf relatively close. And then, as you can imagine, it's going to get shredded by the tidal forces and uh, essentially end its life on the surface of the white dwarf. And here come the pieces flying off the surface of our planet that are going to slowly make it to uh, into the White Dwarf, but first we'll obviously land on the surface and maybe also be observed by some super intelligent race of aliens somewhere far, far away. And so here is our beautiful White Dwarf Sun destroying our beautiful planet Earth once and for all. So there's about 25% chance that this might actually happen. And there goes the Earth. Actually, it survived this uh, very interesting approach. But our sun is now covered in the metals and silicates and all of the other stuff that used to be part of our planet Earth. With Earth losing quite a lot of mass and it's now about 61% of its original mass. And so essentially this is what we now think might actually happen to our planet and to all of the other planets in our solar system if our sun becomes a very powerful white dwarf that disturbs our solar system. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And so hopefully now you know about the power of white dwarfs and why it sometimes we call them the planet killers. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something completely different using video games. Game you later, space out, and as always, bye bye. And now with Earth destroyed, the next on the list is Jupiter. And here comes the beautiful Jupiter. Let's see what happens to this planet as well. That was really fast. And look at all of the materials that we captured from it. Beautiful.